Welcome to another virtual field trip at Mount Pisgah Arboretum. Today, we're going to go check out the Riverbank Trail. Here at the start of the trail, we have a couple really nice wildflowers. We have camas, which are these blue, purple colored flowers. And we also have these little flowers here, which have a name that I love. They're called Disappointing Buttercup because the flowers are so tiny. So here's a camas up close for you. Such pretty flowers. And here is the disappointing buttercup. It looks like a buttercup, but it's just got a few tiny, tiny petals. Right here, we've got some signs of an animal. My guess is a little mouse or shrew or chipmunk because we have all over around here little things that look like, so this is an oso berry and it wasn't ripe yet, still green, but you can see something ate the seed out of it and left it here. Here's another one. Another one. They're all over the place. Here's a whole bunch up a little higher, right over here too. And along with that, I am seeing the outside shells of acorns around here as well. So this is obviously some little critter's favorite spot to come and eat. And it would make sense because a little animal would be able to get up onto this spot, onto this log, and they'll be a little higher, so they'd be able to watch for predators while they're eating. Here's one of those little critters that you might find sitting perched up on top of a log on the forest floor eating its food. This is a Townsend chipmunk. This is a spotted towhee that was next to the trail. They spend most of their time scratching around on the ground for seeds and insects. This is the spotted towhee close up. You can see its big red eye. They're about the size of a robin. Here's our friend cow parsnip. This plant right back here. This is a plant with these huge big leaves and it really likes to grow in wet areas near in wetlands or near rivers. So that's why we find it here along the riverbank trail. It also has these cool beautiful big white flowers. So this is a plant that gets as tall as a person and it starts off just bare soil and then sprouts back up every spring from the roots and then gets really, really tall in only a few months. So remember, this plant causes photosensitivity, so touching it like this is fine, but if I tore these leaves and spread the juices on my skin and then went out in the sunlight, I could get a really bad rash from the sap of this plant. So touching it, it's fine, it actually has a really soft leaf. It's kind of fun to feel, but you don't want to rub the juices on you. If you go in a dark room, nothing will happen, but if you go out in the sunlight, you'll get a rash from it. So be careful with this one. These are really big holes, probably made by a pileated woodpecker. This is a picture of a pileated woodpecker, the kind that made those big holes in the tree we were just looking at. Pileated woodpeckers carve out a new nest cavity every spring to lay their eggs and they carve it out in a tree with their beak. So they've actually been known to cut trees in half when they picked a tree that wasn't big enough for their nest. Just a little ways down the trail from the trees with the woodpecker holes, there is a woodpecker hanging out on a tree calling. It's a northern flicker. grass behind me, there are a whole bunch 
of these little spitballs on the plants. Here's one right here. And this, well, I'm actually gonna pull it out. One, this is on sticky weed. So this is a plant that sticks to things like this. But also it's got this foamy stuff right here. Does anyone know what this is? It's not from someone spitting on the ground. This is made by a bug, a spit bug. And spit bugs like to sit on plants and suck the juices out of them. And the spit protects them, right? Because things don't want to touch the spit. It looks gross. But let's touch it and see if we can find the bug inside. Let's see. Oh, yep, here it is. Oh, it's still so little. It's a little one. See if we can see it up close. So here is the spit bug. It's tiny, green. This is the kind I usually find out in grassy areas. It's this bright green little bug here. Oh, he's totally, it's moving. It's moving away from the video. But pretty cool. So when these grow up, they actually turn into frog hoppers which are, it's a little bug that hangs out in grass and kind of hops around. So you might have seen those too. So the spit for the spit bugs is not from their mouths. It's spit from their butts, everybody. It's gross, but sometimes nature is gross. This is what the spittle bugs look like when they're adults. They turn into a bug called a frog hopper. Behind me is a tree covered in these strange growths, and these are called burls. It means that something has gone wrong with the tree. They can be caused by different things, by insect damage, disease, a fungus, but basically something went wrong with the tree, and it's kind of like a cancerous growth on the tree. This, this is the Coast Fork of the Willamette River. So just a little bit past Mount Pisgah and the Arboretum, it joins up with the other two forks of the Willamette River and becomes the big Willamette River that goes all the way up north to Portland and then joins up with the Columbia River and goes to the Pacific Ocean. This tree stump behind me might just look like any old tree stump, but there's some really cool things going on here. It was an old Douglas fir tree and at some point it was either cut down or it fell down in some kind of storm. And there's this cool thing that Douglas fir trees can do if they're near another Douglas fir tree, which this one, this stump is. It's right next to this other Douglas fir tree, which is still a big tree and still doing really well. What happens is that the roots between these trees were connected. And so when this tree fell over, it was still able to get energy from its friend tree next to it. And so it was able to try to grow bark to heal over the spot that it had been cut or that it had fallen down. And so this one got about halfway. It... But it wasn't quite enough. Over time, eventually the inside rotted out. So this is all hollow inside. And then you can see this hole right behind me where it's hollow all the way down to the outside of the tree here. But if you look inside the tree, there's still sap flowing in this stump. So this stump, I call it the zombie tree because it's mostly dead, but it's still able to get energy from this tree next to it and still sap is still flowing in it. Here's the old barn. So before Mount Pisgah Arboretum was a park part of the Howard Buford Recreation Area, Lane County Park. It was a farm. And there were animals here, there were cattle, and they grew hops and hay, a whole bunch of different crops. There were chickens. So this was all a farm in the past. And then in about the 1960s, 1970s, it became a park instead, so we all get to enjoy it now. The farm is gone, but we still have some cool animals living in our old barn. They're small, furry, 
they fly and they come out at night. Did you guess a bat? That's right. There are bats that live in the barn. These are Townsend long-eared bats. They usually roost in caves, but they'll use old buildings like our barn. They have these long ears to help them find their prey in the night, which is mostly moths for them. We have a maternal colony in the barn, so that means we have mothers with their babies every spring and summer. They are close up. Look at those big ears and those tiny eyes. They can still see, bats aren't blind, but they don't have to really see very well because they're out at night, so they use their sense of hearing a lot more than their sense of sight. We're so lucky to have bats around the Arboretum because bats help eat things like mosquitoes that we don't really want around. You may not be able to see them that well, but behind me in the river, there's the big tall trees on the back over there, and those are cottonwoods. And all around there are willows. And trees and plants that live near the river, a lot of them have seeds that have fluff connected to them so that they can fall into the river and float down the river. This is a Stellar's Jay. They're very smart birds. They store acorns for the winter the same way that squirrels do. Behind me is an Oregon white oak tree. Here's what the leaves look like. They have these kind of rounded bumps. This one, it looks like, got eaten by some kind of bug. It's missing a few parts. But this is the leaf of the Oregon white oak tree. This one's really bright green because it's still pretty young. They'll darken up and get kind of leathery and a little bit tougher as the spring goes on. Look at these violet green swallows catching bugs mid-air. They are amazing flyers. Here's a picture of the violet green swallows that were flying around. And this is what they look like close up. They're very pretty little birds. All right, everyone. Well, this is the end of our walk for the day. I hope you enjoyed seeing the Riverbank Trail and the Oak Savanna area. Hopefully you can come out sometime with your own family and see all of the cool trees and the places that we saw in this video, but in person. Thanks. Bye.